I'm continuing with the FMJ nylon combo traces. I'm going to be doing one which we use a lot at night time for catching flatfish if you, and when you're fishing around rocky areas. So if you're not too sure whether you're going to catch a grey shark, a bronzy, bronze whaler that is, um, a toothed particular fish, um, sea pike, any of those kind of um, fish that might be around, although you're targeting the flatfish, um, at night time, I'm going to show you a trace that I use a lot around the rocky areas, rocky outcrops and that. Basically, what we use for it is our 7x7 American fishing wire, 90 pound. This American fishing wire is black in color. It is soft and supple, very similar to, got the same features as our original 7x7 which was in a brown sandy color this is the black version soft and supple okay works extremely well at night time um, we've been using it for the last couple of years it's very nice we've kept it very quiet but now I've got a lot of confidence in it a lot of confidence in it tuna circle tenno um, it's proved itself it works extremely well for big bloody baits. We know it works. Number one, um, power swivels. Again, very successful, very strong, and they work very well. Uh, Loon's UV Not Sense. Um, again, another product that I've been using for quite some time. Uh, it's nice, it just makes your knots a lot neater. Uh, works well. Our lighter, of course. Two little clear beads. I've always been one for clear beads. You can use our standard chartreuse ones just as an added attractor, but clear always works well. Uh, UV torch to cure the loons. Our tennis racket string, um, soft, supple, high abrasion, works very well. And of course, for our sinker snooting our 31 kilo kingfisher leader line very very nice okay to start off with i'm just going to clear everything out here quickly i need that and that okay to start off with tuna circle tenno it seems to be the best all-round size here in the tail for our flatfish um, and our uh, Toothy sharks, I mean we catch grey sharks from 6 kilos all the way up to 60 kilos with it. It works very very well for the raggies. A piece of uh, nylon coated wire. This is American uh, fishing wire. And we make it about 400 to 500 long. I'm just going to cut that off. Okay. What we do is we snell our snorkel hooks. So I'm just going to show you how we do that. Basically, you're going to put the tag in through the eye of the actual hook and we pinch it with my finger like that. So you basically pinch the wire against, if I can do it like this so you can see it a lot better, you just pinch the wire against the actual hook. And I'm left handed at the moment, so it's going to be seven times around. And that's all we're doing. It's just working from the back of the R all the way to my finger. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven times around. Through the top of the R down. And there we go. It's as simple as that. Give it a little bit of a pull. We're going to use our lighter. And we're just going to lightly melt the plastic. I don't want to burn it. So the minute I see any smoke appearing, I know that the plastic here has melted enough. So the easiest way to do it, and do it with one hand, is to take the lighter and just lightly use a very light heat. You don't want to make it too big, onto the smallest amount of flame possible. And you're just going to lightly run it backwards and forwards over the actual wire. And there we go, I can see it starting to melt. That's enough, you see the smoke, pull it tight, take my fingers that I've wet and just lightly touch it just to cool it down, that's basically it there. 
Simple as that, guys. I'm just going to cut off that little tag end. Okay. Just have a look at that. You can see how the plastic has just melted. But it hasn't melted through the plastic, and that's very important. So there we go. That knot won't come loose now. Our tennis racket string. To join our tennis racket string to the nylon coated wire, all we do is a figure of eight. So we're just taking the, the tennis racket string and we're wrapping it around my finger three times, as we do with all nylon. Take it through, open it up to form a figure of eight. There's your figure of eight forming. And what we do is we push the actual tennis racket string together to form a tight little loop like that. There we go. Just a bit of lubrication on it. And there we go. So there the tight little loops are that I'm talking about, those three little loops. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> with the wire is just wrap it around twice. Once, twice with the wire, the 90 pound wire, go through the eye, open it up to form the figure of eight. There's the figure of eight over there. Push the nylon to where that knot actually is. So we're actually just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it until it gets close to where the actual wire knot is. Pull the nylon wire tight, American fishing wire tight, like that. Pull the wire up to it. And now, and I like to put that hook there. Pull it as tight as we can so that the wire is tight. As you can see there, it's pulled up nicely. One, two, three, one, two. Cut the tag end of the nylon off and the tag end of the wire over there. Okay, so if you want to see, that's basically what the knot looks like at the end of the day. Okay, we just basically take the knot to test it. Stick it over the back here. It doesn't come loose, just to make sure. And you can see how that knot's actually pulled tight now. Three loops around, two loops on the wire, and that's basically the joining knot to it. Next step is to take some uh, of the 30 kilo Kingfisher needle line that I use for my sinker snooting. And you cut yourself a reasonable amount of it. <coughs> About 15 centimeters away I'm going to tie a figure of eight so basically how we do that is we just take the nylon around once twice three times around open it up to form our figure of eight there's the figure of eight forming push them together and just like you pull it so now all I'm going to do is take my pliers to pull tight nylon <coughs> pull it as tight as we can cut that off cut the tag end off as close as we can okay so if you have a look here you can actually see the figure of eight on the tennis racket string there it is there it's a little bit of a burst sticking out here. I'm just going to try and cut it a bit closer. Okay, there we go. So it's a little bit neater now. Again, to make sure it's not going to move when I throw, I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to do another figure of eight around it. One, two, three times. And all these are, are stopper knots. Basically, it's going to stop the swivel from running down the line. So there we go. Slide it back up to where the original knot is, over there, pull a little bit tight. Okay, you can see there's a little gap between that knot and that knot. All I do now is just pull it until I get it to where it wants it to be. And again, we're just going to pull tight. Okay. Cut that end off and that end there. So there's the two stopper knots. Now what we do is we take either super glue if you want, 
Q bond, anything like that. I prefer this UV not sense. And just lightly apply some over the knot area. It's just this an epoxy basically that we put over it that doesn't damage the nylon. Just let it flow into all the little cracks in that. And use your finger just to lightly clear off any excess that you might have. And then what we do is we take our UV light or you can go outside if you want and we just quickly bake it under the UV light or sunlight and if you're using super glue remember before actually touching the knot uh, wet your fingers and then touch the Q bond or super glue and that it stops it from sticking to your fingers and again you just roll it in and that should be cured it only takes a couple of seconds that should be done there we go, it's nice. But like I said, if you're using Q bond or super glue, just wet your fingers like that and then just roll it so that the super glue actually goes into all the grooves. And that's it, done. So that's the length that I wanted, which at the end of the day is most probably about 500 to 600 centimeters in length. Gives a lot of movement in the actual trace. Next step is to add our little clear bead. And there he is. That goes through. The bead over there. NT swivel number three. Slide him on. And there he goes all the way down. Another clear bead. Slide him on. All the way down. And then our power swivel number one. And the reason we use the power swivel is when you're actually grabbing the trace, You've got something to hold on to when you're actually holding the trace. If you use the small little swivel and the fish took off, it will run through your fingers and generally cuts you. So we use quite a big swivel, it works a lot better that way. Again, to end this off, it's a figure of eight, three times with the nylon around. Open. Slide down. There we go, I'm forming my figure of eight now. Bit of lubrication there. Gonna pull this. There we go. Slide the knot down. And I find the best way to actually pull that knot tight is to take your your circle lock, place it in there, and to pull it as hard as you can. And that's it. Cut the tag end off. So there's the finished knot, as you can see over there. There's your sliding trace, your movement is all there in the wire, in the actual uh, nylon. You've got your abrasion resistance as far as the nylon goes. All I'm going to do is add a little sinker snooting to it. And again, it depends how you're going to bait it up to how long you actually want this hook snooting to be. Take my Kingfisher leader line. 31 kilos and to attach it all I'm going to do is a figure of eight onto the NT swivel one two three times around back through open up there we go there's my figure of eight little lubrication slide it down pull tight and then this big tag end cut it off as closely as I can or as neatly as I can okay there we go, and then just measure off what length. If I was just going to put a mackerel head on there, I'd cut it quite short. If I was going to use a dangle, I'd make it a bit longer. So I'm just going to cut it there, shouldn't be any need for that. Okay. So there's my entire trace. It's about 1.6 meters, 1.5 meters in length. The tennis racket string, obviously my thing's going to run up and down the tennis racket like that and that's basically the entire trace finished it works very well at night time if you're using big bloody baits for diamonds, duckbills, eagle rays 
grey sharks if they do come around. Um, we've got hammers on them at night as well. Um, yeah guys, that's basically the combo trace. It's wire and nylon FMJ.